Presented in association with MV Promotions, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver trunks with red trim, hailing from Paranaque City in the Philippines. He weighed in at 121.2 pounds. With a record of 28 wins and one loss, he has 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his first attempt at a world title and seeking his 19th consecutive victory, please welcome the longtime WBO Asia Pacific champion and the WBO number two world ranked junior featherweight contender, introducing Juan Miguel. Me his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner presented in association with Zemfer Promotions wearing black trunks with silver and white trim he is the defending champion fighting out of Mexico City La Ciudad de Mexico he weighed in at 121.8 pounds his hard-hitting record stands at 28 wins one loss 24 big wins coming by way of knockout Tonight, he is making the third defense of his title. Please welcome the hard-hitting, reigning, and defending WBO Junior Featherweight Champion of the World, introducing Emmanuel El Vaquero Navarrete. And introducing our referee in charge, now to give instructions, Russell Morta. Trunks here good, trunks here good. Anything below this line is a foul. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to remember, remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands. Acuerdas a que no uro, pelea limpia. Good luck to both of you. God bless you both. Manuel Navarrete has that smile as he came down for the ring walk, and now it'll change to that laser focus. He is as determined a guy to deliver pain and punishment as there is in the game. A volume puncher who has shown power, 24 knockouts, and 28 wins, and over the course of this past year as a world champion, he is not bashful about getting after it. Joe, Tim, and Dre, ringside, glad you're with us. This is our title fight at 122 pounds before we have the heavyweight championship fight with Tyson Fury. Juan Elorde is not his grandfather, Flash Elorde, but he's a good fighter, technically sound. Mm -hmm. He's got a good base under him, but he doesn't throw a lot of punches. He's very economical with his punches, and I want to see how, that, how he fares against Navarrete as his engine starts to rev up and he starts to let those shots go. With the 28-day turnaround for Navarrete, you know, I'm looking to see if he's flat. You know, that's that's kind of quick. He said he took two days off to rest, you know, and, and I thought he should have took a week off. But he didn't have, you know, he wouldn't have had enough time to train. But I'm trying to see if he's, if he's flat. He looks a little flat coming out, a little cold at the moment. Well, a good thing that Navarrete said in the fighter meeting was that he didn't spar for the first week when he was back in camp, which is good. He only sparred two two weeks, six total sessions, and I think that was smart, so hopefully he's not flat in this fight and he can pick up where he left off so we can have a good fight. His punches to me look a little slow, a little, little, uh, little flat. Timmy, it's been a minute and a half. I, I get it. But Tim's in a mood tonight, happening. Dre. That's Dre, have you noticed this, that Tim's in a mood tonight? He is. He's taking shots at everybody. Yeah, all, of boxing is, all, all of boxing is soft. Never that day after he, a minute and a half. He's not an he's analyst tonight. No, he's a critic say, tonight. Come on now. Come on now. Tim I'm just saying that the fighters, oh, is, the fighters are soft nowadays, man. I mean, they are. And you know they are. I'm not It's like it's not $10 million, so I'm not going to fight. Man, come on, man. Get in there and fight the best. I hear you. Shoot. How much did you make against Pacquiao? Times three. <laughs> hey, just put it this way, man. Just put it this way. I've seen the watch, Tim. I'm right next to it. I see how many carrots are on the Rolex. Oh, man. Y'all give me a hard time, man. I see. You walked into it. I think right now, Navarrete is just trying to have a look at Alorde. Alorde is actually stocking. Normally, Alorde likes to fight off his back foot and allow his opponents to come forward. But if Navarrete doesn't want to come forward, he's gonna just sit back and just wait. Wait on him to make a mistake. Did you 
see that right hand? Sure did. Lunging right hand. See how sloppy it looked? Looked a little flat to me. But now they always looks like this in the first one or two rounds. Then all of a sudden you see a different guy come the third and fourth round. Andrete here. First round of the four-week turnaround is going up against the grandson of the Hall of Famer, Flash Award. Here's Miggy on that. I'm Juan Miguel Elorde. I'm the grandson of former junior featherweight champion Gabriel Flash Elorde. He's the greatest Filipino fighter for me, like the Pacquiao in the 1960s. Of course, it's a big pressure for me because fighting under the Elorde name is a big pressure. But my parents always told me that don't mind about the pressure, just do your plan and God will do the rest. When I was a kid, I wanted to be like my grandfather. He was my idol, so I want to be a world champion one day. Hard to live up to when a family name who is an all-time great, a Hall of Famer. Of course, Flash Lordy was always the guy you named Filipino fighters, and then comes Manny Pacquiao, which, you know, here is. And by the way, the families are friends. You see some of the great Filipino fighters, the current... Jerwin and Cajas on the bottom of that list, guy who we have broadcast his fights for the better part of the past two years. Now 31 wins deep into his career as a titleist. But it's interesting, the families are friends. In fact, Pacquiao, when he was very young in his career, would work out at Alorde's gym. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Juan Miguel's father knows him well. Juan Miguel knows him well. Answering, and answering. he said, listen, we have great respect for Manny because what he's done for a generation of Filipino fighters, he's created opportunity. Yeah. Guys are getting exposure. Guys end up on these global, international, big money cards. Absolutely. So there, we have seen this entire wave, the generation of Filipino oh, oh, oh. fighters who have become something. Bernardo? Yeah, in the corner of Emmanuel Navarrete, Pedro Navarrete Jr. told me, look, the first round, it was all about feeling out who Miguel Lorde is. I wanted him to move, kind of pick up on his style, but now he's going to go out and attack and start breaking him down, what you're used to seeing. But we did expect him to be more of a counterpuncher than an attacking fighter. Well, Bernardo took the, the thought right out of my mouth. I haven't seen a Lorde in the past this offensively aggressive, and I think he's probably doing that to keep the hands of Neverete in his pocket so he doesn't get that engine going. Oh, he just got caught with a left hand, punching between punches. But you're right. He said, listen, I have to change my style. But in changing that style comes a little bit of risk, and that left hand just got to him. He's hurt. He's still hurt. Navarrete, he senses it. And there's a left hook from Navarrete. So halfway through round number two, and Navarrete stings a Lorde. You know, the crazy part is the Lorde, he's, he's fighting. He's choosing to fight Navarrete when he should be playing defense or getting out the way of these punches. I like the fact that he is. I think it's his only chance. And Ooh. whether or not he goes down in a bad way, I think it gives him his best chance. That lead uppercut, that lead right uppercut from Navarrete hurt the Lorde. The Lorde nearly got clipped again. Now, Navarrete trying to drive right down the middle there. Right hand goes to the body. It was a left hand that started the damage here in round number two and a little bit of offensive success. And still coming forward is Alorde. Mm. You see that length for a 122-pounder. Yes. Navarrete has length. Yes. Tim, does Navarrete still fight? <laughs> no, he just found his rhythm now, baby. He just found his rhythm. I had to get you. How quickly he can turn, Dre. How quickly he can turn. He, uh, he found his rhythm now. Oh, man. That was a nice uppercut right there. It stung a Lord Day. He hurt. He's still hurt right now. And but jab snapped him back as well. This is a very good round for the champ. Remember, Tyson Fury is coming up as soon as this one finishes up here. There's the clap for the end of round number two. Body shot to finish it up. Gets the warning from Russell Moore to keep it up. And there's one coming from Alorde now. So he took damage there in round number two, as we will show you how Navarrete was able to do it. 
This is the engine I was talking about. Whenever that day starts to get that engine going, he just throws. He doesn't necessarily want to land in any one spot. He'll lean in. Some would say that he's off balance, but that works for him. He led with the left uppercut, which is a no-no, but for him it works. Did we see from it again? the ground, Trey. Yes. From the ground. <laughs> and he knows that the shorter fighter is going to duck when right. he faints to the left, and he I met him look. right there at the halfway point. Okay. That, show, that shows okay. you the, the IQs. Otto Volin, the undefeated Swedish fighter who is going to be a heavyweight title challenger in just moments. Going up against this guy, Tyson Fury, with his young, dynamic 26-year-old trainer, Ben Davison, the lineal heavyweight champion, 28-0-1. The big mega event rematch with Deontay Wilder scheduled for this winter. But both Fury and Wilder have to get through their next fights. For Fury, it comes tonight. For Wilder, it comes in November against Ortiz. And then we will have this mega event. But anything can happen when big men are throwing punches. So there can be no slip up for Fury tonight. That is moments away. Alorde, excuse me. He understands what's at stake. You know, he's fighting. He's fighting with passion right now, even though he was hurt in the last round. Marvin Simodio told me in Alorde's corner, look, my biggest instruction is don't go straight back. When you move laterally, keep your hands up. And although he did get tagged pretty good in that round, he was alert and reacting to my instructions. Getting after it here against the ropes. And from long range comes the left hand. And then Navarani says, I'm willing if you are. And throws that right hand with purpose. This is a very different version stylistically of what we were used to seeing with Alorde. Yeah, but that, that's going to bode trouble for Alorde. This isn't his game. And the more he opens up, the more emboldened he becomes, the more Navarante is going to have target practice on his face and on his body. It's not going to be good for Alorde. Thanks for it fan-friendly, good TV fight, that's for sure. This is Navarrete's home. He loves this kind of fight. Mexican Independence Day weekend. And Emmanuel Navarrete, who is the unexpected Mexican world champion to be highlighted on this day. You know, you sit around, you look at the landscape of boxing. This should be a Canelo day, right? Right. And here we are on this tradition-rich day on the boxing calendar, and it's a six-foot-nine English, Irish traveling gypsy who's going to headline it, and this is the Mexican world champion who's in the spotlight, Navarrete. And he's earned that spotlight, by the way. It has been an awesome 2019 for him. Slowly, Navarrete, slowly, systematically breaking down Alorde. Hitting him with everything. Uppercuts, right hands, left hooks when he pulls straight back. Blood coming from the nose of Alorde. You can see him trying to breathe in through the mouth. The Lord is getting hit from punches, he, from angles he's never been hit from before because Navarrete does not throw punches from an orthodox angle. He just throws, and with the, the, the reach and the length and everything that he brings to the table, it's extremely difficult to deal with. You see, the Lord they pull it straight back. You cannot do that against a taller opponent and got uh, an opponent that have a long reach. He's making that mistake, and it's, you know, it's paying. he's paying for that. Too much firepower. Man. Dominant third round from the champ, Ooh. Navarrete. The ropes held him up. That is a technical knockdown. That is being scored a knockdown. Seven. Eight. Come here. You want to fight? You're good. Yes. There's the bell. Happened with one second in the third round. Hurt badly. Listen, if I'm in, if I'm in Alorde's corner, I'm stopping this fight right now. I'm not going to send my guy out there. Here's the onslaught coming from Navarrete. Look at this left hook as Alorde pulls back. And the, re the reason why the referee called that a knockdown, and I know he didn't go down, is because the ropes were there. If the ropes were not there, Alorde would have went down. Beautiful shot. That's a lead left hook by Navarrete yeah, right there. Navarrete okay. fainted Alorde out of position right there, brought the left hook. Alorde didn't see that punch coming. You hear it all the time in boxing. That's the punch that'll do it. And he, and he finished with a sweeping right hook for good measure. Okay. 
You do. You do. This fight, this fight's pretty much over right now. Oh, it will be in moments. Yeah. And then we will have Tyson Fury. Okay? Ref has to keep a close eye on the yes, Lord. It does. Not let corner. him take any unnecessary punishment because he's still hurt. Look at it. Coming out to try and uh, oh, at least establish this. himself. Oh, it lands a short right hand. So at least the challenger's willing. Yeah, but he's going to get disciplined for that willingness. He, Trust he, me. He. Acting Ooh. like a fighter, though, isn't he? That's, That's it. Yeah. It's over. TKO victory. Emmanuel Navarrete. Nice stoppage by the ref. are going to look over Megalorde. Thank you. 26 seconds. You know, Lorde, I mean, third round. Tess, he came to fight. You know, he came to fight. He, I, I, you know, he, he fought the wrong game plan. You know, I thought he was going to be laying back and trying to set traps for Navarrete. Talked about the engine of Navarrete getting going, and that got going early. Right hand that barely missed, oh, left hook that missed, wow. but he's always coming back with something else. That sweeping right hand hurt Alorde and great stoppage from the referee. One or two more punches, and things could have really got ugly for Alorde. It's a great stoppage from the great referee. Stoppage. Right on time. Alorde right here is attacking. Gets hit, standing straight up on the ropes right now. Too much firepower. Uh, too way, coming from all different angles too, Dre. The arsenal's too vast. It's too much to deal with if you're a lord. And look and, and look how Navarrete, how he threw the left hook, came back on the right foot. Here he is, yeah. boom. Then the sweeping right hook. But that's the thing with a volume puncher. He'll right. miss, but he's always coming back coming with something back with else. Something he's else. not, a, he's not economical up. with his punches. He's volume, volume, volume. And with that... TKO win. Tyson Fury can get ready to come out. This is the 4K look at how it ended. Right on the chin. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. You see a fighter's leg go off to the Fuck. side like that. That's a sign that the fight is over or you or it's close to being over. And in that case, it was time to stop. That 4D look is something, isn't it? Sick. Now we're going to see the heavyweights with the 4D cameras in a moment here. Tyson Fury, Otto Valin, moments away now. But let's make this official the defense of the WBO Junior Featherweight World Title. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 26 seconds of round number four. A referee in charge stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout and still the WBO Junior Featherweight Champion of the World, Emmanuel Evaquero Navarrete. Fun to watch, isn't he? A four-week turnaround. Who knows, maybe he'll fight next month, too. He just gets after it. The champion from Mexico City, Navarrete, defending, and look at this crowd on Mexican Independence Day weekend here at T-Mobile Arena. we got celebrities who are coming in, and that means the heavyweights will soon be making their way to the ring. Tyson Fury, Otto Valin, moments away, but first, here's Bernardo. Emanuel, ¿sabías que era el fin de semana de Independencia Mexicana y brindaste ese tipo de actuación? ¿Cómo te sientes de tu actuación? You knew it was Mexican Independence Day weekend and that you had to put on a show. How do you feel about your performance? Pues gracias a Dios, yo la verdad salí muy bien, mi rival creo que está bien, gracias a Dios. Espero que les haya gustado mi presentación aquí en Las Vegas. Y ahí va a quedar para rato. ¡Viva México! Said, look, I'm happy because I think I put on a great performance. Fortunately, my opponent is okay, and I came out here to put on a show. I hope the fans enjoyed it on my very first Las Vegas show on Mexican Independence Day weekend. So, Vaquero Navarrete is here to stay. Now, 
eh, ¿se te parece que estuvo bien que detuvieran el combate? Porque Marvin Somodio le había dicho al referee, cuidado, fue el primer golpe fuerte, quiero que detengas. What did you think of the stoppage? Because his cornerman, Marvin Somodio, told the referee, Russell Mora, hey, if he gets hurt, I want you to stop it. La verdad no sé, pero mi rival eh, y su esquina trabajaron en, en ello. Yo creo que eh, la, el haber decidido que lo detuvieran está bien para, para, para este, mantener al peleador bien, de, con buena salud. Y pues lamentablemente me tocó, bueno, le tocó, perdo, le tocó perder a mi rival. Yo gané, gracias a Dios. Espero que se recupere y que siga adelante. So the most important thing here is that it was a good performance for me. I think the referee did the right thing because he's going to go home to his family and everything's going to be okay. It was a good performance on my behalf and he gave what he could. And at the end of the day, I came away with the hard-fought victory. Joe. Thank you, Bernardo. Great victory for Navarrete. As Alordi is dismissed.